I'm waiting for it to show up. It's live. Oh, okay. It's showtime. It's Tuesdays in the cellar. And today is, I'm saying Taco Tuesday because it's Cinco de Mayo. So uh, normally Ben and I go in the cellar. We grab, dust off a bottle of wine, grab something and open it. But today we decided to start with a little tequila. Ben's crazier than me. He's doing a shot. I made a margarita. So cheers to cheers. our clink clink. To our Taco Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo, wherever you are, cheers. Cinco de Mayo. It's so refreshing and nice. I don't know how you're doing that one. Follow with the Corona. Oh, I mean, <laughs> no, no Corona. <laughs> We've only spent the last like 20 minutes saying don't bring up the word Corona. So sorry. Uh, anyways, sorry. The bellow. <laughs> this one is Good thing we practiced. Hey, Ron from New Jersey. I'm so glad. I was. I think I was emailing you earlier or something, but glad you guys are here. Okay, anyways, let's turn it. Well, a couple of things about tequila. We've been doing a little research, and in America with our wineries, people who know a ton about wine are called what? Winos. No, sommeliers. <laughs> okay, that too. Uh, sommeliers is the technical term. <laughs> I swear we haven't been drinking first, but maybe. Uh, in tequila, we learned that Mexico's expert tasters are called catadores. So um, I'm not a catadore. But what's we that? Know. David Ravondi of 123 Tequila. We, a good we friend. do. And how do you know David? David is a friend who was brought uh, to the winery by a friend. And uh, we've been friends ever since. So now we trade uh, tequila for wine. Yeah, <laughs> That's no. Do you trade a bottle for bottle, by the way? Yeah, I mean, oh, that's a lot of tequila. Well, you've got really premium uh, tequila, the one, two, three brand. All right, yeah. I'll be on the lookout for it because uh, that's not the brand I have today, but that's okay. Um, let's see a couple little margarita facts since I know everybody's tuning in to hear these. Uh, one of the earliest stories for the margarita was in 1938, and I apologize, I have to read this because I'm not a Catadori. Um, his restaurant in Rancho La Gloria between Tijuana and Rosarito, which I've done that drive. That's a pretty drive because you can get really cheap lobsters on the coast there. Um, oh, and then the frozen margarita machine was uh, invented by a high school dropout, Mariano Martinez. Good for him. And let's see, uh, what else can I tell you? Margarita means daisy in Spanish and the daisy is an old prohibition drink. Wow. But enough about margaritas and tequila, oh. right? And tacos. Tacos. And oh, my sister's on. Hey, Jen. So we're doing tonight, we're doing uh, enchilada casserole chicken. Uh, this morning I I uh, put a chicken in the pot and uh, uh, briefly boiled it, made so I have chicken stock, and uh, and then I made a tortilla casserole, which uh, is nice. dinner tonight, rice and beans, and a, a shot or two of Papa Pietro Perry, Russian River Valley, since that's what I've opened today. <laughs> I'm making tacos. I I I have to hide the tequila from the kids. Hide the hide the uh, yeah hide the tequila from the kids. Good call. Um, all right, well I'm gonna go to my wine too. So we're really we're here for the wine. Uh, where are we at? Ben told me he was opening the 15 Russian River Valley. So to be different, I did 15 too, but I went to the other valley. Where am I here? I still can't figure out what the camera is. I went to Campbell Ranch. So I'm over in the true Sonoma Coast up in Annapolis. So. Um, Oh, Simone said, please don't hide the tequila. Well, Simone, you know where it is. All right, Ben, talk to me about this 2015 Russian River Valley that's in your glass. Well, the Russian River Valley, that uh, I enjoy making the Russian River uh, wine because it's the different parts that are left over from our, all the different uh, vineyard decimates that we have and all the vineyards we get fruit from. And so after we put together all of our vineyard decimates, the different parts are left over. Not much difference in the, the grapes themselves. It's just how they're aged in a little older uh, oak barrel and not so much new oak. But it gives me an opportunity every year to, uh, as an open palate, all these different parts and pieces of the Pinots that we make, give me a great opportunity to again, Sometimes one of the best wines we make is because it has a little bit of everything in the Russian River. And this one, I think the 15 did extremely well on the uh, West Coast, uh, or the North Coast. North Coast Wine Challenge. Yeah, I think a 90, 
three or four points or something, whatever. It was up in the 90s, and I know it came in 15 was a smaller vintage, too. So I think that was the last year of our drought. So 15 came and went uh, quickly. I think by the time we got the scores in, we were on the tail end, and then we got a little mad. We wish we had saved a little more for ourselves. Well, it was the smallest vintage we've had in years and years. I mean, probably the smallest that I've worked with. And I think I mentioned it earlier how, you know, I have to make, to each vineyards, I do different stuff. So, like the Peters Vineyard, I I used that for the seven seven. First, I make the Mukaida, and then we make the Peters, and then we do the uh, seven seven seven, and then we do Pomard, and then we you you know with the other vineyards that we use. But for 2015, I had like a third of the amount of grape grapes I usually get from uh, Randy, so it was a struggle. I mean, I. It, uh, <laughs> I was pulling my hair out, but you see that <laughs> was a struggle. It was, it was really a struggle trying to put together everything that we do. So for that particular vintage, it was it was really too small, and uh, we had difficulty making all the different wines we had. Very well, small. Correct. I don't think we made um, we didn't make magnums or yeah. three liters of the fifteen Russian River Valley or Sonoma Coast in twenty fifteen because it was of very the yeah, it was a very stingy harvest for sure. So, yeah, we so, don't like stingy. So this, the I mean, right off on the, just the color of this, the garnet color is just beautiful. Very, you can read through it. So I always like to say that if you can read through your Pinot, it, you can see it's nothing added to it. It's true color of Pinot. People come into the winery, I know that women love it, but but the guys that give it this, the stink eye because of the color, you know? And I always tell them, I think I could tell you something about what you drink. You're a Cabernet drinker because you're looking for dark color. With Pinot, you don't get the dark color. You get the flavor, but but it's not about the color in Pinot for sure. So the elegant, beautiful looking, uh, uh, vibrant color on this. And then on the nose, you, the, the toastiness of this, the vanillas that come out, really sets off the cherry and uh, uh I, I don't know. I get uh, pomegranate in here also in the nose. Just lots of different things going on in there. I keep smelling mine, and I'm getting different things, and pretty much because I'm drinking a different wine, and so it's confusing me a little. Um, well, let's get pomegranate and fresh plums I get in this one. Oh, it's oh, it's up beautiful. I some of your wine. I like mine, too. I'll be great later. <laughs> well, I, I know where there's more. Well, the other thing too is that is the one nice thing about the Papa Pietro Perry wines is they are consistent year after year. So if you happen to be drinking a Russian River of any vintage right now, you are going to get some similarities to what Ben is talking about, even in the 16s. As our wine ages, I always say as the wine ages, they get a little softer. Some of those acids die in. And if you kind of, um, uh, if you think about it a little bit, like spaghetti sauce at night is usually what I say. In at night, it's delicious, but the next day, when it's sat in itself and some of those acids break down, and go in. It's just ah, smooth and beautiful. And the wines we release them when they're ready to drink. That doesn't mean you have to necessarily drink them. They get better. Never be scared if you find an old bottle. Um, someone's looking for her rosé. I guarantee you, it's on the truck. Roseman, Ro Rose uh, Mailman's I not just, drinking it. I just checked. It's out for delivery today. Oh, it was out for delivery today, Lori. Pay attention for the doorbell. <laughs> uh, someone just checked. That is that is service. Oh, Wendy, Wendy Nunez is uh, posting on here right now. She doesn't have any more 15s, um, but she's going to be here Thursday. So, but when we're going to drink, I think you're drinking 16 with us. I'll let you tell me that. I have to go check the notes. I have to go check the notes too. <laughs> and I actually had to have a sip of wine. Um, but anyways, what I'm saying too is, regardless of what vintage you guys are drinking out there, there are going to be some similarities to what Ben is saying with this 15 that's in his glass. Um, drought year or not, by the way, it is a, um, there are similarities and that's what you do beautifully with your wines. So this I one here is still bright acidity. It has lovely acidity and the tannins have softened up a little bit. So really, really approachable, lovely wine. And, and usually the Russian river and Sonoma coast of all ours usually are ready to drink sooner. And that way you can hold on to the uh, vineyard designates and uh, clone wine a little longer. You so say that. Yours, you can drink these. 
But remember when we pulled out those O3s and O4s of the blends and we blew everybody away with them? They were amazing. Not to so, say they're fast. They're just approachable <laughs> sooner, you know. <laughs> they're good now. They're good later. They're called now and laters. <laughs> I believe, right? Sure. Good one. <laughs> I try. What can I? What can I say? Uh, yeah, tell me a little about the 15 Campbell Ranch. Okay, that's the one I'm yeah, you surprised me on that one. The Campbell Ranch, we that's usually a little later in the season for us because it's a it's a cooler growing area, right? It's just a very few miles from the coast on a high ridge out there in Annapolis, which is is pretty far up the coast. And so hopefully they're going to make that ADA the uh, – right now people that are working on that call it, wow, west of west, which is oh, well, well. pretty far out there. But it the fruit out there is the, the really, really bright acidity. And you almost get some, some – um, from the fog, you almost get some salt water. Some salt you do. Water. Yes. You know, it has that like little something there that – that's reminiscent of it. The fruit's gorgeous. And then since it has a little longer hang time, usually we get these really beautifully matured fruit them out there. It just takes more patience. So different kind of spice, more earthiness. It's like it, it's on the same soil as the Peters, which is they couldn't be further apart in Sonoma. One's way down past Sebastopol, the other's way up north past Fort Ross, but they're both on. Uh, this is gold rich soil. Gold rich soil, yeah. Oh, I did not know that. So, and it, it's funny because uh, Campbell Ranch is a uh, it's an old uh, sawmill. Uh, okay. When I first started going, it, it takes about three hours to drive out there. It's only about. Unless you fly. Hours. Yeah, well, we fly occasionally. Okay. So, so Steve who's the owner of the, the Steve video, Campbell. Steve Campbell. Uh, he and his dad, his dad is a uh, World War II, he passed away just lately, he was a World War II pilot, bomber pilot. And he had a beautiful twin engine plane, which Steve gave up and now he's got the single plane, but we single prop. But he took us out there, uh, it was Dave, uh, my assistant winemaker, and Anthony was uh, from Antill. They, they flew out with us and. And I sat in the front, and I was really uh, amazed. It took like ten minutes to fly out there. <laughs> so we flew over the Golden uh, Shrine from the uh, uh -huh. uh, what is it? The some sect out there on the coast, the, the uh, beautiful place. But we flew out there, landed, and as we were landing, you get this landing strip right in the middle of the vineyard. You come in, you land, and if you don't stop in time, you go over the cliff. And so I'm like, well, I'm not ask if you stopped in time because I think I know that answer. <laughs> yeah, no, we did. So uh, anyway, it was much easier just to fly out there in 10 minutes than it is to drive out there for three and a half hours. But then Steve has to drive the uh, the grapes to us, you know, on a, on right. a double, you know, on a, on a big truck on these windy back roads. It's a, it takes them all day to get it, get the fruit. So they have to pick early in the morning. Yeah. Anyway, it's a beautiful spot, and the fruit that comes out of there is is fantastic. We've been working with them for quite a while now. One, well, it's uh, I was corrected with the salt. It's a uh, saline is the uh, the the way that I was uh, I was corrected a little bit. Uh, so it has a little bit of salineness uh, uh, to the wine. And I do know, am I correct ocean that breeze. what's that? Ocean breeze. Oh, that's a good one too. Sounds like a deodorant though. <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't want with wine, or maybe you do. Sorry, um, <laughs> I'm getting the stink eye, which is a technical term to be clear. Um, oh, Yolanda said she's a chicken, she couldn't get on a plane that small. Uh, I'm oh, the report. Dave, and, Dave and Anthony were all excited about going. Then I look at the back there, and they're both with their <laughs> Wait, not, a, a not a smile out of either one of them. They were awful quiet. Did he do flips in the air? No, no, we went straight no. down and went <laughs> over and back, you know. I was trying to have fun with it. Um, he does have, doesn't he have sheep? He rents sheep in the vineyard. Everything out there. There's a lumber mill still, I think. It's still a sawmill. You know, it, it, it's out there where uh, Pay Brothers are out there. There's a few, there's nothing out in it. They had a post office, and I think they closed the post office. 
in Annapolis, there's absolutely nothing out there. So you're out there in the very end of the of the states. You can't get any further. And so, but it's a very unique place. Very unique. The wine's amazing from them. I think I, I it's different than the Russian River vineyards, which is what I I appreciate. I like having a little bit of differences sometimes, and it does have a little more of that minerality to it, a little more of that salinity to it. Is that a word? Um, a little bit darker, which I do enjoy. I'm a little jealous with your 15 Russian. I wish I had a glass of that too. I'd love to side by side uh, these two different valleys. What's that? I said it could be arranged, but not just now. Yeah, well, <laughs> I think it, I mean the wine holds up, but I don't know about that. Yes, it can be arranged. And by the way, Ben lives like what two miles from me, three miles from me. You don't Maybe. know that. Yeah. yeah, we're really close. Yeah, yeah. not close well, enough to share his right. wine, but pretty close. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, all right, so tell me a little bit about the 2015 um, vintage itself, because that was the well, last round. It was. Uh, it was very small. I mean, uh, we had like 12 and 13, these huge vintages. So thankfully we had enough fruit there, but 14, it started getting a little, you know, back to normal. And then 15 was, everybody thought it was a normal, it was a normal uh, harvest. But as we started taking uh, uh, counts of the, of the buds, it's the bunches, started coming up short and then they were very, very small, very intense little berries. And which so, little berries mean little juice, which means little wine. Right. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that growers really don't like. No, is they don't like much. They like to get it off the vine early while they're still nice and plump, which means that they have a lot of weight to them. And as, day by weight. Yeah. And so as we wait a little longer, they seem that they have the tendency to drop the water, evaporate so they get more flavor uh, concentrated. And uh, the consequently, the weights go down and the growers are, the smile kind of goes into a frown. <laughs> they got to hold out. Maybe a rainstorm will come. They can suck it up. I do know 15 in wine club speak, uh, 15 was the, first year that we started adding a library wine um, into the shipments. And so usually if you're bronze, which means you get six bottles twice a year, you get one bottle that may be a, a vintage or two behind. Silver, you might get one or two. Silver is 12 bottles of shipment. And then the gold might get one or two. So we did that in 15 because if we hadn't, we are so blessed our wine club is, uh, is, is phenomenal that we would have had no wine in the tasting room. Uh, and then we actually got phenomenal responses from it. And so now we try to include an older vintage, quote, quote, older. So our current club shipments are the 2018s and most everybody got a 15 or a 16 of some sister property. And I'm a huge fan of side-by-siding. I think you have two hands for a reason. Um, and so opening up an, a, like a two year difference is a lot of fun. Oh, oh, those are quite two glasses. I, I can guess be in trouble, I'm, yeah. I'm not used to side by siding like this. It's very. No, it's, not, it's not a whack, you know. Yeah, that's out of whack. I, I, I like the two uh, two wine glasses because they, they do change. And they, they are different. It's a lot of fun. Um, I love the fish. I love your new, I love your new fish above your head. Over here. My fish is from Mexico. That's from Todos Santos. Uh, they catch the fish, they paint them, dry them off, paint them, and stick the paper, the uh, linen on there, and there you go. We have one from Hawaii that uh, Yolanda bought. It's beautiful. Did you we'll catch? Hang that behind me next time. Yeah, hang it behind you. I caught this fish and ate it. Wow, good on no. you. Paint yeah. and all, huh? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't at all. You didn't catch it. Didn't eat it. I didn't catch it. I didn't eat it. I just bought his uh, his skin graft. I don't know what the heck that is. Anyways, um, <laughs> I don't know what, what but Dimayo, I put it behind me. Gaio Taku. Gaio Taku. Gaio Taku. I know. I'm gonna skip over that word. Gaio what? What is that? Gaio Kato or something. Gaio Kato. I know yeah. a catador is a Mexican song. Well, Mexican, Mexico's expert tequila tastings. I didn't want to sell. Oh, yeah. Frankie knows Toto Santos. Yeah, I love Toto Santos. It's awesome. Um, and Ron, thank you for loving the wine club. I know it's not a skin graft. 
<laughs> I did say skin graft. Oh, well. That's what happens when I start drinking tequila first. I don't know what's going on. Jeez. I'll just stick with wine. Well, that's a good thing to stick with. And we have plenty of it. But, you know, we, we're going to talk a little bit about if people wanted to watch about how wines are made. We have a video on our on our uh, website. And you may want to tell them how to get to it. That shows is I think it's a nine minute video of how we make wine at Papa Pietro Perry. So in case you're interested at all about what we do, it it takes it, it's a little video that takes us from the vineyard to the party afterwards. The after we do all the steps of making the wine, getting it in a bottle, and then having a chance to enjoy it. So it might be something that. Uh, you might like to see. And we, <laughs> Yolanda, Yolanda typed it in since you couldn't say it. Guy Guy Yotaki, I think fish print. I don't, I'm sure everybody else can read it and enjoy that. Um, we do make our wines a little differently. So if you go to www.papapietro-perry.com, uh, that, that video is on there. Is it under the video gallery? No, it's on the front page. It's on the very front page. We do make our wines a little differently than some other houses. So it is kind of neat to see uh, we get our grapes in usually in the morning-ish. Uh, everything is hand-sorted. But then everything stays separate in bins, fermenting separately by vineyard and by clone. So we talked about clones last week. And we have each vineyard has multiple different clones. Everything stays separate through fermentation and through their first trip into the barrel, which is really cool. And when all this stuff is over and you do come visit, Papa Pietro Perry, if you come during harvest, we love to take you in the back and give you the three minute tour. Because that's about two, two minutes. Oh, I talk more. So I get a three minute tour. Ben does a two minute tour. So, so we, uh, we leave the doors open, uh, the garage doors open during harvest. And that way, uh, people come in and are curious as to how wines are made. I think it's a great opportunity to show people uh, what we do. And so there's no mystery or secret about it. We open the door and and uh, we have people come in all the time and check us out, which is it all, fun. We enjoy meeting people as they come to visit us. It also lets the carbon monoxide out. It does. <laughs> we got <laughs> running in. But everybody leaves happy after that, you know. <laughs> oh, Dan's saying you can come in and help with punch down. Don't fall in. No, no, we, we have insurance issues. Yonda, I already can see your, um, I can already see your face and your fingers starting to type. Uh, no help with punch down because we've had people fall in the bins. Correct. Well, we had uh, Rose, who uh, uh, Renee's niece came and helped me make Zinfandel when we were at Windsor Oaks. And we had this 500 gallon black uh, water tank that they cut the top off of. And we fermented our Mendocino Zinfandel in it. And she was a newbie, came to help. She got up on the ladder with the punch and went, and kept going right right into the, uh, into the <laughs> fermenter. Nice flowers, that was done. She, I know Simone says that's her fear of just finding her legs kicking out from this bin of grapes, which uh, I think, but didn't our harvest intern one year fall in the bin? I think every it's kind of a rite of passage in a way to, to fall in the bin. Just don't go head first. And don't be alone. I'm help now. Yeah, no, we we'll hold them under for a while. <laughs> well, the good news is usually the juice is at the bottom. Yes. But it's fermenting juice, so maybe you you don't want to do that. Oh yeah, Vincenzo Martinelli, who uh who I've met a couple times on the cruises. Uh, ben and Yolanda, you guys are, are great friends with him as well. He's a Latin classical guitarist, and he visited us last year, the year before, and we actually popped him in one of the bins. I believe it was the Nunes, could have been the 16. And he sang a little song to the Nunes grapes, and they he came out. He did. He yeah. did sing a little song. It was awesome. Um, Punching down with his feet. Punch down with his feet. Uh, somebody asked, Michelle was asking, uh, are these recorded, our, um, our little uh, drinking and chatting together? Yes, Michelle, they are. They are. Actually, we have them on our website. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly where the page is, but I think Dan put the link up. Um, but if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and or our Facebook page, these are recorded. Oh, he just put it back up. 
Um, so it was a page preview on it. Um, we put it back up and um, they're all they're all on there, all of our chattings and talkings, and we're trying to open up different wines and enjoy them, different seller wines and enjoy them too, because um, why not? What else well, are we gonna do right now? Well, little did I know that I, you know, being all about winemaking and using the equipment and have fun doing that, that who knew I'd be spending more time on, uh, you know, on FaceTime than I am doing actual seller work these days. But Well, that's because it's the time of year. <laughs> back to the seller here anytime soon. Yeah, and it is the time of year right now. I was at the winery yesterday and um, uh, ran into Stephen Magnum, which was great. He was doing a curbside pickup. We do offer curbside pickup. If you uh, are in the area looking to get out for a drive and want to pick up some wine. We should show that wine. video of Dave making the deliveries to people. Somehow we should show yep. that. Uh, if so, we also are doing a weekly update, um, trying to just keep you guys appraised of what's going on in the winery. Those are all on our Facebook page, also on our um, on our YouTube and website. And Dave, our assistant winemaker, wanted to help out one day and do some curbside help with curbside pickup. Not so good. Dave needs to stick with making wine. So there's my teaser. Go take a peek at, uh, at the update. We're having fun with some videos. If anybody out there wants to send me a little 30 second clip of how they're sipping, right? Sheltering in place with Papa Pietro Perry wine. I tell you some stories. If you have some stories, send them along. Yeah, some stories, send us pictures. I love them. Um, yeah, we are doing curbside pickup Monday through Saturday from 10 to four. Just give us a call ahead of time so we can have it ready and make it easy for you. Uh, now through possibly the end of the month, we're doing the $5 flat rate shipping if you're not local. Um, and that is just use promo code SIPSONOMA. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, stock up your wine. And then we just introduced some virtual tastings. So these are fun and Ben and I are getting a kick out of them and enjoying them, but they're uh, they're not so interactive as well. So if you did want to do an interactive where you want us to bring the tasting room to you, again, the best part is we drink our own wine, so you don't even have to give us wine. Um, on our website, we've added four different wine packages. Purchase the package, you get the wine delivered to you. And the idea is, is then you sign up for a virtual tasting and one of our amazing tasting room hosts will lead you on a discussion about the wines that are in that package. Um, should be a lot of fun different way to different way to bring Sonoma County to you and bring Papa Pietro Perry directly to you in your house. But we've got, I think we're doing one with Julio and her company tomorrow. We've got some guys from UBS coming up uh, this week and next we're week. Tomorrow we're doing what's it? Autodesk. Autodesk. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Autodesk, Autodesk tomorrow. We're going to be doing a zoom with them. Um, drinking some wine, telling some Big stories. Tech company that does really amazing tech work. But you know, we're just you and I here reminds me uh, in the old days, we used to watch this, uh, the two guys from MMM Carpets on Creature Features. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. Then, here, then we show creature movies after we get through our show. Creature Features? Oh, like the swamp thing? The swamp yeah, movie? Or, or the, the, yeah, the creature from the Black Lagoon, or it came from outer space, or it. All true stories, documentaries, right? Right. <laughs> so it. Um, oh, yeah. Instagram and, and Facebook, we, uh, Wine Road just posted a 50 ways to get your wine now uh, video, which is absolutely hilarious. Oh, let's see. Susan, she's in Auckland, New Zealand. Wow. She discovered our wines when she spent three months in Hillsburg two years ago. I gotta, I'm going to put her thing up. Um, I was looking forward to coming back to see you this year. Oh my gosh, I will tell you, Susan, we loved being in Auckland. We did an Australian we it, right? cruise. Amazing. Too bad we didn't know you then. We would have had dinner with you. Um, absolutely. What time is it now in Auckland? It's gracious. Ooh, it's, it's gotta tomorrow. be a little later. <laughs> it's tomorrow. Oh, yeah. How is it tomorrow? Is the world still crazy? Let us, yeah. <laughs> let us know. <laughs> That is funny. All right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Ben, you have anything else you want to say about these wines? I got to go uh, make time. The 15 is just a beautiful wine. Very, very small uh, harvest. So very concentrated fruit. This These will last for a very long time. Beautiful, beautiful wines. Uh, I'm glad I opened my uh, Russian River. So it, it's still like in its youth. So I look forward to drinking this for the next 10 or so years anyway. 
hopefully. Hopefully, I'm like in the 15 Campbell Ranch. I got to tell you, it's delicious too. Stay safe, then then you'll be around to to uh, drink it. Yeah, stay safe. Wash your hands, and you too can drink wine in 10 years. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So in, in word, yes. Ben and I are back on Thursday. We are here for Pinot time. We're going to be opening up the 2019 Rosé of Pinot Noir, right? And the 16 Nunes. Uh, Wendy Nunes is going to join us. Fred will join us if we can get them out of the vineyards. Yeah, we'll talk uh, for their, all their secrets about what they do out there on that vineyard. They are going to tell us all their secrets. Richer than everybody else's soil. And that was an old pig farm, right? Yeah. Well, all right, so I'll make some – oh, never mind. You'll find that out Thursday. All right, every Tuesday, every Thursday, Ben and I are here. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. We absolutely love it. Cheers to you. Cheers to us. Very Wash good. your hands, have some tequila, have some wine and tacos. Oh, well, that was fancy. <laughs>